I'm changing the order this week because I think the situation justifies it. In any situation, there are trend lines and there are inflection points where trends change direction. And I believe that within regard to the COVID situation, this week we definitely reached the inflection point and things will go increasingly in a different direction from now on. And here is the event that I think really triggered the changeover. This was actually last weekend in Rotterdam where people were protesting and, and yes, you can see they were throwing fire bombs and burning police cars and things like that. But in the midst of that situation, the police did open fire on the demonstrators, apparently using live ammunition. They killed two or three of them and sent another half a dozen to the hospital with wounds. And a few days later, we started to see things like this in Guadalupe. Uh, people were rioting over the COVID restrictions and vaccine mandates and so on, and they burned down cars and buildings. And here is some more news from the same time period, the 26th, where demonstrators fired shots at police and journalists. And also in Martinique, they burned government buildings. At the same time, in a more peaceful way, the big three automakers in the U.S. and their unions have agreed not to require coronavirus vaccines. And I think this was like a realism kind of maneuver here because they watched the John Deere strike and they've seen other things going on in industries where the vaccines have been pushed. In another part of the world, in Germany, the new leaders, after the recent election, have decided not to go along with a request by Merkel to have a two-week COVID lockdown after she leaves office. So this is a change on the part of policymakers who have had their ear to the ground recently. Now, how is it going in the U.S.? Well, here is a screenshot from a video put out by Tony Heller on YouTube. I highly recommend him as a voice of sanity in this situation. And here he shows a map of vaccination rates in the U.S. Uh, darker colors mean higher vaccination rates. And he has focused in this video on two states that have high vaccination rates and also high rates of COVID infections and deaths, perhaps. Here's New Mexico, which is spiking back up uh, in October. And, and here's Colorado, which is having the same sort of experience. So, you know, you're beginning to wonder about why they're doing what they're doing, because none of it seems to work in the final analysis. And here is another statistic, grim statistic, which is that as of November in 2021, more people have died of COVID than died in all of 2020. So this is just more evidence of failure. Now, during the week, I was cruising videos as usual and came across a video called Simulating the World, where they were talking about complex systems. And there were a couple of interesting points made by this video. One is that society is a complex system. It cannot be steered like a car. And this is similar to something I've said about the lockdown in San Francisco, which is unlike a car, you can't just turn off a city and then turn it back on. Even if they were thinking about trying to get the city going back to normal, so much damage has been done that I don't think the old normal will ever return and the new normal that comes along is simply not going to be that good, particularly in the downtown area. And the same video talked about the illusion of control. And what they were showing here was a group of self-driving cars going around in a circle. And you can kind of see it over here where from time to time, you know, you would think that since these were running machines, uh, that they would behave in sensible ways. But the, what they were seeing was that from time to time, they would develop traffic jams that looked kind of like a gawker slowdown we see on the freeways from time to time. And the same video also talks about the limits of predictability. 
you know, the question is, did the people behind this whole thing think they were going to make things go in a certain direction and that they could accurately predict how they would go or perhaps not? Um, you know, what I've seen in looking at time series from time to time is the further out you project the time series, the less accurate it is. And here's a main point, which is that as willing cooperation decreases, the cost of enforcement increases. And I think that's what we're going to see going on over the next few months. Uh, in other videos about complex systems, they talk about the fact that if one person, then two people, then three people start to do something, then more and more people will feel like they have permission to do something. So if you apply that to people choosing not to go along with the Vandates, um, then what you see is a cascade of resistance. And in the end, this is one of the groups that I think is behind the curtain, one of the groups that for some reason had the ability to make most countries shut down their economies, no matter what the cost was. But I think that based on uh, the whole background of information about complex systems that they are going to get an outcome they do not expect. What's in the garden this week? At the present time, we are in a waning cycle of the moon with 37.9% coverage. This is your root crop time according to moon theory. And my own theory is that during the second week of either the waxing moon or the waning moon, you have the most influence in the direction of either above ground or below ground crops. And this is what my indoor garden is looking like at the present time. Up here we see my older romaine plants. And here is uh, a radish plant that I'm cutting for greens. And here is the fig tree uh, that is starting to put out nice leaves. It was looking kind of ratty when I got it, but I've been feeding it and taking care of it. I think this is the other radish plant and more romaine coming down here. So, and here is the other side of my basement garden. I really want to encourage people to do stuff like this. Uh, any kind of cool fluorescent or white LED light, uh, 5000 K or higher will work just fine. Don't need to spend money on expensive grow lights. And, you know, six inch pots like this in 10 by 20 trays work very well. You know, the whole area that I have in my basement is like less than eight feet by eight feet square. So you don't need a lot of space. And in fact, I think if you just had one shelf like this, you know, four shelves, five shelves, three feet long, you could get a lot of stuff going. About two weeks ago, I talked about my experiment with making a floating Kratky system. And here you see that I have implemented a larger system of that type. Uh, I had made these floats and put them on sale, but nobody bought any, so I put them to use. Uh, in making it, I started with this wireframe shelf. I did not want the tray to sit on it directly because of the kind of sharp edges with those wires and things. So I put a piece of quarter inch plywood on there that I had laying around with the grain at right angle to the shelf. And then I put the tray on it. This is the 18 by 24 inch tray that you can buy for $6 or $7 at Lowe's and Home Depot. And here's what I'm doing at the moment with putting plants in it, which is that because the root balls on some of these plants is not as strong as I'd like it to be, I'm leaving them in the cups, but I'm setting them in the net pots. And because they're set high, I'm only using one piece of foam, and but the second piece of foam will go uh, later when I take them out of the pots. But this is what it looks like at the, on the bottom, where uh, the bottom of the cup is sitting up from the bottom of the net pot, and uh, this means that it will be sitting down in the water very nicely. And here again is the picture of the whole system. Now what I am doing is I am using a turkey baster to pull nutrient solution out of the tray and soaking the plants from the top to give them nutrition while they're building their root systems. Uh, the amount of nutrient solution in this is only about three, four inches. That's all you need. Uh, these floats are 16 inches by 22 inches and the holes were drilled on three inch uh, centers 
that is centers that were three inches from the edge of the piece of foam. And what I do from time to time to discourage uh, stratification of the nutrient solution is just kind of put my fingers on the, the edge towards me and push it up and down to, to pump the solution around inside the system. <clears throat> and here are some other solutions on a bigger scale and smaller scale actually. A few weeks ago I was walking around my neighborhood and saw a notice stapled to a telephone pole uh, with the city of San Francisco offering courses to young people and perhaps anybody uh, about things that will be important in next generation manufacturing and I thought this was one of the most progressive things I'd seen done in this city in a long time. You know the technologies are things like CAD CAM, CNC and 3D printing and I went looking around for some other resources about this and what I found was this company called Titans of CNC. I've watched some of their videos I think and it's pretty amazing because they're doing five axis CNT making very exotic parts. But out of the goodness of their heart and their own self interest, they are putting out free training on CAD CAM and CNC online that you can look at. You know, if you're looking for a career, or looking for as a young person, looking or an older person, looking for a new career. You know, we're living in a time when anybody who's willing to work can probably find work and if they come with a, an exotic skill like this, uh, they're likely to do even better. So in addition to these courses, um, you can, for instance, go to Amazon and buy a cheap, relatively cheap, uh, three-axis CNC carver for wood and plastic. And this would enable you to learn this particular technology uh, basically, you buy something like this, and maybe it comes with software. It includes CarveCo Maker Cam Design software and Candle for controlling your machine. So, you know, for this $200, probably a USB connection to your existing computer, and you are on your way. At the same time, for 3D printing, you can get this 3D printer for 160 bucks and learn how to do that. Um, it says you can choose whatever software you want. So, but that's another way to learn something that's really important going forward. And here is another piece of good news uh, with Samsung picking a tiny Texas town for a $17 billion chip making factory. This is interesting because as far as I know, Samsung is a South Korean company and there may be various reasons for them wanting to do this, but one of them may be to put some distance between themselves and mainland China, which has a lot of problems that are getting worse. And at the same time, by plucking themselves down in America, you know, I suspect that they're getting a lot of interest from potential customers and <clears throat> they'll be able to sell anything they can make. And this is part of uh, a trend that I hope will grow, which is to make it here, to make Made in USA a good thing again. Now here's a small scale solution that you can use in your personal life. This is a thing called a battery minder. And what it, this is, is a kind of small charger uh, for car batteries. But this is a charger with special features because one of the things that happens with batteries is a process called sulfation. You know, batteries use sulfuric acid and lead, and when they operate, the electronic activity changes some of that lead to lead sulfate. Well, this device will charge your battery up to an optimum level, which is about 13.4 volts, and from time to time, it will give your battery an extra zap of electricity, I think up to about 16 volts that will help desulfate that battery, make it stronger and extend the life. And something like this is also a really good thing to use on your car from time to time. Uh, if you buy a new battery from a shop, it's probably not going to be at the maximum power and never will be, which will shorten its life. But if you get a device like this and keep the water level up, you may find your batteries lasting longer. I do use this on my old car and I noticed that it starts a lot better than if I let the battery get down to what you might call a normal level. Now here is something that's a little bit different. 
And these are these mylar coated or aluminum coated mylar blankets that people call rescue blankets and things like this. But, you know, it's a very thin coating of aluminum on a plastic substrate that will reflect a lot of the heat. You know, when people are injured, they use these. It's like 90% retention. But the use I have in mind is that if you're living in a cold place and the power goes down and you had some of these, you could use push pins to tack these to your outside walls and retain more heat. Or you could spread them out over the insulation in your attic. And at the same time, something else you may want to think about getting is to lay in some extra fertilizer to make sure you have it. I've probably got enough for about two years and may buy more. And, uh, you know, if you have fertilizer and seeds and water, you can grow food. And you may also want to take advantage of any leftover stocks of seeds at your local seed place. Maybe they're on sale or maybe they're just available. And if you see them now, you know that you will have them.